maple syrup step by step. Check out our podcast episode to learn more about maple syrup in the Sioux. Find the link in the description below. There, you can also find links to the French version of this video. Part 1. Trees To begin with, we must have trees to make maple syrup. Maple trees are of course used for maple syrup. There are four species of maple trees that have sugar potential. The sugar maple, the red maple, the silver maple, and the black maple have sufficiently sweet and tasty sap. The sugar maple is of course the most popular and best known sap producing tree. The sugar maple and the red maple are the most common we have here in Sault Ste. Marie. But we can find some silver maples as well. Black maples are found in the southern part of our region. The sap of sugar maples has a sugar content of 3 to 5 percent and the sap of red maples has a sugar content of 2 to 3.5 percent. A sugar bush is a farm or woodland where many maple trees are growing in the same area and are used to make maple syrup and other maple products. The sugar bush is often divided into different zones for harvesting. Some examples of zones are the mature maple, the ones ready for harvest, regenerating maple, ones who have recently been tapped and need time to heal, dominant red maple, dominant sugar maple, and dominant softwood zones. In each sugar bush, there is the sugar shack, either a small cabin or a large facility. In winter, the tree is dormant. It contains little water. During this period, when the temperature drops below 4 degrees Celsius, the tree uses enzymes in the wood to transform the stored starch into sugar. During the spring thaw, the snow melts and seeps into the ground. When the nights are cold and the days are warm, the tree begins to wake up. When this happens, water from the soil reaches the roots. Part 2. The Sap Run When the nights reach minus 7 degrees Celsius and the days reach 7 degrees Celsius, the sap begins to flow. The temperature must remain constant with cold nights and warm days for the sap to continue flowing. During the night when the temperature drops to minus 7 degrees Celsius, the cold causes the gases in the tree's wood cells to compress, creating a vacuum and drawing water to the top of the tree. As long as the temperature is not below minus 7 degrees Celsius, there will be water absorption in the tree. During the day, when temperature rises to 7 degrees Celsius, the hot temperature will cause the gases in the wood to expand, creating pressure for the sap to flow out through the spile. When the temperature reaches over 7 degrees Celsius and the inner wood reaches 7 degrees Celsius, sugar production stops and the sap stops flowing. The warm temperature pulls the sap up to start new growth. Last year's reserve sugar follows the sap and brings nutrients to the tree until new leaves emerge and can produce food for the tree. The inner bark carries the sap downward and the sapwood carries the sap upward. Before leaving the tree, the sap must pass through the hardwood of the maple trees. Therefore, the speed of the flow is reduced. Trees normally produce sap for six to eight weeks, depending on the weather. Most of the sap is collected during a 10 to 14 day sap run. As the nights and days get warmer, the flow stops. The sap also stops flowing when the tree's buds open. Part three, tapping. The process of putting a hole in a tree to get the sap is tapping. A drill is used to make a hole in the tree then a spile is placed on the hole. A 7 16th bit is usually used to drill the shaft. It is advisable to use a smaller bit, a 5 16th bit, 
as it allows for faster healing and more taps in the future. Drill a hole that is three centimeters deep, but not more than eight centimeters and slightly inclined upwards. Place a spile in the tree without pushing it in. When tapping a tree, there are a few things to consider. Do not tap a tree that is less than 22 centimeters in diameter, as the tree must be able to handle sharing its food. As a rule of thumb, a tree 22 to 43 centimeters in diameter can be tapped once. A tree 45 to 60 centimeters in diameter can be tapped twice, and a tree 60 centimeters and larger can be tapped three times. The health of the tree should also be checked before tapping, as diseases, insects, etc. can cause stress to the tree, so it should be left alone so it does not create further stress by tapping. Maples can live for centuries and reach a girth of seven meters. Trees are normally tapped at 0.6 to 1.2 meters above the ground. Despite the miss, it does not matter which side of the tree is tapped. The direction it is facing has no more bearing on the amount of sap collected. If a tree has already been tapped, be sure to separate the taps horizontally by 5 centimeters and vertically by 40 centimeters. If the taps are too close together, that area of a tree may die. You must therefore leave room between the old and the new taps, so make sure to note where you made your taps the previous year. If we respect the rules of tapping, we do not collect more than 10% of the tree's sap. Each tapping can also produce about 38 liters of sap. Some trees can be tapped for 150 years and still produce sap. Now, when tapping, we can use the standard plastic or metal spiles. There are also small spiles and plastic micro spiles. There are two containers we can use. We can either hang a bucket on the spile or attach a tube that connects to a large tubing system that connects all the trees to a main tube that leads to the sugar shack. There is often a vacuum that sucks the saps from the trees. With the traditional spile and bucket system, the sap level in the tree must be higher than the tap. But with the vacuum harvesting system, a vacuum is used to transport the water in the tree through the wood tissue to the spile, even if the water level is lower than the tapping. Many small traditional sugar shacks collect sap with buckets. They often have lids to prevent debris from falling into the buckets. Farmers often have to go out at least once and even twice a day when the sap really starts to run. They make sure the sap buckets don't overflow and that the sap doesn't overheat or rot in the buckets during the day. The sap becomes darker as the season progresses and there is less of it and the sugar content drops. At the beginning of the season, 40 liters of sap produce one liter of syrup, but at the end of the season, it takes 50 liters of sap to produce one liter of syrup. It is also said, without much certainty, that the darker the sap, the richer the taste. When the sap stops flowing, the spile should be removed as soon as possible to help the tree heal. The tap hole will close quickly. We can also use a spile puller to help remove them. Part 4. Boiling and Evaporation Once we have collected sap, we can start boiling. By boiling the sap, we are removing the water by evaporation. The higher concentration of the sugar causes the sap to turn into syrup. There are special evaporation furnaces for making maple syrup. They can be heated with wood, oil, propane, natural gas, or electricity. Small sugar shacks often have homemade stoves to make syrup. This is often a wood stove with two or more shallow pans. 
The sap is normally placed in the largest pan to start. Gradually, as the sap boils and there is room in the pan, continue to add fresh sap. As long as the sap continues to evaporate, you can also transfer it to another pan to continue boiling. The temperature rises slowly at first, but as soon as there is more sugar, it can boil quickly. The sap will get darker and thicker as it turns into syrup. It will also produce a layer of foam that can be removed with a skimmer. The sap becomes syrup at 4 degrees above the boiling point of water. The boiling point of water is usually 100 degrees Celsius, but it can change depending on the altitude. For every 305 meters above sea level, the boiling point drops 1 degree. Barometric pressure also affects the boiling point of water. A higher barometric pressure means a higher boiling point and vice versa. Finally, the temperature of the day can affect the boiling point. If you don't have a sugar shack, you can still make maple syrup. Simply collect the sap and boil it on your stove. Just be careful of the steam which can cause burns and even peel paint and make your walls sticky. You can check if the syrup is ready with different methods. Here are some of them. First, you can use a thermometer, provided you take into account the variables that affect the boiling point. Second, you can use a hydrometer that determines the density of the maple syrup relative to the density of water. Third, a densimeter that measures the percentage of sugar in the maple syrup. Fourth, a refractometer that measures the refractive index of a drop of syrup, directly related to the quantity of sugar dissolved in the solution. Other less scientific methods involve checking the thickness of the syrup by using a spoon and seeing how slowly it flows. If you use a wooden spatula, you can tell if the syrup is ready if it sticks to the spatula, also, a wooden spatula with a hole in it can be used. After dipping the spatula into the boiling liquid, blow into it. If a stream of bubbles forms, the syrup is ready. Once the syrup is ready, it is immediately filtered to remove the nitre or sugar sand, which is a natural precipitate of certain minerals in the sap. There are two types of filtration methods. The gravity system is the cheapest and most accessible method for small producers. The hot syrup is poured into a felt or wool cone. A paper filter must be added to recover most of the nitre and to make cleanup easier. Large producers use the pressure filtration system. The sap is pumped through a series of filter plates and disposable filter pads. Next, the syrup is sealed in sterile containers to ensure that it is well preserved. You can extend the life of syrup by freezing the containers and storing the open containers in the refrigerator. If we continue to boil the syrup, we can make taffy out of it. If we boil the syrup at 120 degrees, we get sugar. We put it in molds. Do not use detergents to clean the equipment used to make maple syrup and other maple products. This can leave a film and contaminate future production. Maple syrup that is sold wholesale must meet national standards. In Canada, it is classified according to its color and taste. There are four categories. Golden, delicate taste, amber, rich taste, dark, robust taste, and very dark, strong taste. Canada produces 83% of the world's maple syrup, with Quebec being the leading supplier. We can make syrup with birch sap. It produces a stronger and less sweet taste. It is darker and thicker. It looks a bit like molasses. Part 5. The History of Maple Syrup The production of maple syrup, or maple sugar, was discovered by the indigenous people of North America long before the arrival of Europeans. 
Many indigenous tribes in the northeastern regions of North America made maple sugar in the same areas we make maple syrup today. They made maple sugar instead of maple syrup because sugar keeps better. They added sugar to most of their meals and later used it as a trade item when the Europeans arrived. They passed on their knowledge to the first settlers who arrived in New France. The indigenous people made a notch in the tree with an axe. Then they would insert a piece of wood that acted like a gutter to direct the sap into the container. This piece of wood was a thin board often made of cedar in the shape of a V to best direct the sap to the container. They sometimes refer to these as wooden spouts or simply spouts. They often used a birch bark container placed on the ground. This container was called a macook. It was sealed with pine resin. They sometimes drank the fresh sap or used it as a medicine. They transferred the sap into hollowed out logs. Since the logs could not be placed on the fire, they heated stones. Once the stones were hot, they placed them in the sap-filled logs. They continually circulated the stones by adding new ones and removing the cold ones to warm them up. Some indigenous peoples used soapstone bowls or clay pots to place the sap over the fire so that it would cook more quickly and with less work. When the Europeans arrived, they brought iron kettles and pots that were later used to make maple syrup. Another method described, though we don't know which indigenous peoples used it, was to let the sap freeze at night. In the morning, they would remove the layer of ice. They would do this again night after night until the sap had thickened. All that was left to do was boil it for a few minutes. When the Europeans started making maple syrup, they introduced the sugar shack in the late 1700s. They collected the sap in wooden buckets. They carried the buckets by hanging them on a yoke. Then they emptied them into a barrel pulled by a horse. Sheet metal was introduced in the 1860s. Buckets, pans, and spiles were then made of metal. Wooden spouts were successively replaced by tin spouts, then by small tubes of wood, metal, and eventually plastic. Wooden spiles were introduced around 1850. Metal spiles were introduced around 1860. Plastic spiles were introduced around 1850 along with the tubing system. At first, the system was gravity-fed. The pump system was developed later. Part 6. Medicinal Benefits of Maple Syrup Maple syrup has many nutrients like manganese, riboflavin, zinc, magnesium, calcium, and potassium. It contains many antioxidants. It fights inflammatory diseases. It is an alternative to sugar for better digestion. It has important vitamins and minerals. And it is a healthier alternative to artificial sweeteners.